We continue our series, David Rockstar, and this morning we're looking at David as a dancer. Perfect thing for sort of a youth Sunday. We are in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 12 through 16. Now, King David was told, the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went up to bring up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. Those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps. He sacrificed a bull and a fatted calf. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. While he and all Israel were building up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michal, David, daughter of Saul, was watching from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. All right. Well, this morning, we're looking at David, rock star as a dancer. I don't know. Have you, have you been watching the Olympics? I hope so. I hope you've taken a break from the news, for God's sakes. That's gotten kind of wearisome over the years. And I know the Olympics start out with some cloud of politics and all the rest of this stuff and, you know, caution. But, man, when you get down to it, just a great competition seeing these young people from all over the world just give it everything they got. And you notice what a lot of them do after they win something big? They got their own little dance on. Oh, man, don't you? I love that. I love that celebration of dancing. And uh, it reminds me of this uh, joke that I think is funny, at least, was um, why are German Baptists opposed to premarital sex? Because it might lead to dancing. Oh, I know. (laughs) It'd be even funnier if it wasn't so true. (laughs) Oh, man. So I don't know. Dancing. Dancing in church. Seriously. Uh, we're, We're going there. Yeah. So, I love seeing these kids with passion and all the excitement, and I think there's some real truths here with David dancing this morning that can really brighten and lighten our whole lives. And so, I want us to think about David. Of course, he's a rock star, so he's got to be able to dance a little bit. And I don't know how good your dance moves are today. We're not going to have you show us. We might want to do that. But I invite you to walk back into the story because I think there's some great truths in this story for us. And so, this is the story. The ark has been missing for 20 years, roughly. And no one knew what happened to it. The enemy got it, and then it was shelved in a warehouse somewhere. (laughs) And then it was discovered, and it went to this guy's house, as you can put it here, and and everything was being blessed there with this guy's house. And so David goes after it. And and it's kind of wild, because I don't know, any Indiana Jones fans here at all? Can you go back that way? Because if not, you should watch it again. So it's just like the storyline from Raiders of the Lost Ark, (laughs) this thing. That's where they got it from, actually, the other way around. And so the ark is gone. This, the ark is a symbol of God's presence and God's blessing with the people. And it's been gone. It's been missing in action. Warehouse, someone, to, they don't know where. And then they discover it. The enemy kind of discovers it. And then it brings bad things happen. And then someone says, well, take it. And then good things are happening to them. And so David says, can we have the ark? And they say, sure, come and get it. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's that simple, Really? And so they go and they get this ark and they just take a few steps and they, David begins to do these sacrifices. And then David, as he's coming into Jerusalem, does this dance with all of his might. Wow. Can you imagine that? Now, remember, David is the king at this point, right? So the king is dancing in this uh, ephah, this kind of a ceremonial thing, and he is dancing with all his might, not just doing a little, you know, two-step thing. He's giving it all he's got. And with that, I think there's some truths. And I think one truth is that dancing brings back our passion. Now, if any of you lost some of the passion for life, I'm wondering, don't look at the person next to you. (laughs) The passion for love and life. And what about the passion for faith? Dancing can help us bring back some passion. And David knows what passion is all about. Now, Everybody, all the people in the streets, love that the king is dancing. I mean, the king, their king, is dancing. He's the king after all, except for one person. You know who that was? That was David's wife, 
who was Saul's daughter, Michal. She's watching from a second-story window looking down at this saying, oh, this is the worst. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> oh, you know who you, who you are out there. Now, <laughs> it's interesting because the sad tale, and when David gets home, he gets, oh, man, he gets it from her. She says, you're dancing like a common person, and you're king after all, and I'm Saul's daughter, former king. So don't you know any better than that? And then there's sort of a little addendum, which is that they had no kids. Mm. Passion gone, not just from faith, but from life and romance. And it does remind me a little bit of worship sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> because sometimes, not just the German Baptists, but the German Germans, I've been called the frozen chosen, right? Or the chosen frozen, however you want to look at that, right? Every, and I know some of you go like, oh, man, you can dance other words, but not in God's house, please. But I look out there sometimes and love to see the kids up here because they're so enthusiastic. You watch them at VBS, and they're kind of like doing some moves. You might have to encourage them. But it's kind of cool. And uh, I, I was thrilled last year, of course, we were watching mostly online, and uh, Denise Niblick sent me a little video of little Lisa dancing to um, the, the praise music up on the screen, and that was kind of cool, too. So, uh, and, and I've seen other people dancing there, too, and I, I wonder sometimes do we need to just pick up the beat a little bit. And we, we wonder, too, because I snuck it in here. Did you notice the call to worship this morning, Psalm 150? Did you notice what that is in there? Praise the Lord with dance and tambourine. Oh, yeah. And, and actually, the warm-up for that, Psalm 149, also talks about dancing. The last two psalms, the, sort of the climax of the book of Psalms on worship, are about dancing. And this one, now, can you imagine? Now, don't worry. I'm not going to dance with the tambourine this morning. I really would embarrass my daughter. <laughs> but, you know, at big events... At big events, do you sometimes dance? I've seen some of you at weddings, by the way, so I know that you do dance, as a matter of fact. You, you've got some moves. And I, I think it just sort of brings some passion. The last wedding I, I actually officiated, uh, they had this dance thing, and, you know, and I told my daughter, I'm going out there. <laughs> she said, oh, my God, no. But we got out there, and, and actually the DJ loved it. He came over and filmed it. He said, you know, like the priest, pastor guys dancing. It's good, man. And, you know, I didn't, you know, show up too badly. But anyway, it was fun. It brings back passion. Now, I know every occasion is not the occasion to dance, but have you lost your joy de vie? That's French for, you know, joy of life. But it sounds better in French, like everything. Joy de vie. Have you lost your joy de vie? Do you need to sort of recapture the passion? Are you like David or are you like Mikhail? And I know every song, and, and it reminds me, too, that, it, you know, sometimes we feel like, I know. What kind of worship is right? What kind of worship is correct? I just remind you that for much of the church's life, that the Psalms were the only kind of worship we did, right? And, and then Martin Luther came along, and Martin Luther, all those hymns that you think are so great from Martin Luther, they're so staid and whatever. I just want to tell you something. The music, the harmony, are German drinking songs, just so you know. That's true. And the reason Martin Luther put biblical... Lyrics to German drinking song, so that people would know them and sing them in the streets. That's right. You've been singing in worship German drinking songs, okay? So, yeah. How about that? And here's something else. The organ, when it was first introduced, was the scourge of the church, according to some people. You know why? It was too worldly, too much in the way of electronics. So, I know we got this tug of war. What kind of music? What kind of, you know what? I just tell you something. All music is God's music, all right? It's how we do it. And so, uh, and I, I love to see our young people sort of moving and dancing, and oh, the enthusiasm they have is great. And maybe, I don't know, we're not going to do a dance move this morning, but just lighten it up a little bit in the morning, and you might find that you have a little bit more passion in life, in your romance, if you've got that, and hey, in your faith life, because you need a little passion. My favorite sport is coming up soon, which is football, okay? And I've seen some of you too on social media, and you'll do things for football you'd never do in church. I mean, and I don't want you to take your shirts off and paint your faces or anything, but you know, the way of everything going on, and, but if that kind of passion is okay in sports, then 
What about passion and, and faith, right? You all have your comfort zone, but maybe you need to just pick it up and say, oh, you don't have to sort of check your emotions at the door when you walk through the church door. David danced with all his might. So it helps with our passion. It helps with something else, too. It helps with resilience, okay? Now, resilience is sort of a fancy term, getting a lot more popularity. Heard a lot in Olympics, by the way. And resilience just means bounce back. How you bounce back from adversity, challenge, and loss. And studies have sort of, there's a lot of studies in the last five years or so on resilience. And I've had a couple of national committees on resilience, as a matter of fact. But people have done studies on families that have gone through tragedies and seen how well they did with resilience. And you know one of the keys to it, oddly enough? Families that dance do better with resilience. Families that dance do better with resilience. Now, you don't dance at a funeral, loss of a woman, I know that. But families that will go to a wedding and dance, families that will do things at their homecoming and dance, do better with tragedy and adversity and obstacles than families that don't. Isn't that interesting? I think it's interesting because I've kind of looked around, you know, because I've looked at this for a long time, and it's interesting because I think I see that that's true. So it helps with our passion, it helps with our resilience. You know, it's interesting because in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, a time for everything, we have a chance to go through all that, but one of the lines is what? It's a time for mourning, and there's a time for dancing. Resilience. There is a time to mourn, but friends, there's also a time to dance. Do you know what time it is to dance in our lives sometimes? Now, one of my favorite athletes of the Olympics is Allison Felix. Oh, my God. That woman is amazing. I hope you've watched her this week, been watching her for a long time. She came onto the scene uh, quite some time ago, and she's 35 years old this week as she's competed in the Olympics. And this week, I believe it was with the women's relay, she became the most decorated female athlete of all times at the Olympics. Amazing. And then she also became the most decorated Olympian field track star ever, male or female. Pretty amazing woman. And she is incredible. She's got a little thing that she did at the end of some of these things. And she's 35 years old, and she's a mother, okay? Now, back in 2018, so all the moms out there, uh, she has incredible resilience. In 2018, she was pregnant with her daughter, Cameron, and they, at 32 weeks, they had to do emergency C-section. They were not sure that she was going to live. And they were not sure that her daughter was going to live. Her daughter spent a month in neonatal intensive care, and she, uh, Allison Felix, you know, just struggled to recover. Didn't know if she'd live, let alone compete in Olympics, and she said when she qualified for the Olympics again, she said, just to line up on the starting line is a victory for me. Now, one of the great assets she has, she says, is God's power and grace in her life. She's been an outspoken person of faith and a woman of tremendous vigor and talent. She says that it's all about God's grace. And if you look at her today, you'll see a woman of resilience and a woman who's got a little dance move now and then too. And when the women, the women's relay team won that, I don't know if you saw them, but they all had like a flag behind them. They were holding hands. They were jumping up and down, kind of dancing. And it was just such a celebration. But you know what? When you have a moment of victory, go ahead and take a step or two. It's okay in life. So where are you with your passion? Where are you with your resilience? Here's something else that... um, Long marriages, long-term relationships often have dancing as a component. And I love the story that John Orkberg tells of this uh, wedding that he went to. And you know the part of the wedding where they always, they, they, it's sort of the end of the dancing section, or maybe it's the middle of the dancing section, some weddings. And you, you get all the couples out there and you say, okay, uh, all the couples that have been married 10 years or longer, you stay out there. And then it, it goes to 20 years, and then some go away, and then 30 and so he was there as a pastor, and they got all the way up to 50 years, and, and this couple was left on the, on the floor. And so they stopped it, and the DJ goes over to this couple and says, how long have you been married? And they said, 61 years. And so this older couple, and he says, do you have any advice for this newly married couple that will help them live? And so this older gentleman thought, he said, well, it's like this. 
He said, we've been married 61 years. We were separated by the Korean War when I went over there. He said, we've both lost our jobs and time. There have been times we've been separated, but we've always found time to dance. Always take time to dance. You know, you can push life out and you say, well, when life gets perfect, maybe I'll do that. And when everything's perfect, we'll just, you know, settle. But maybe every week or so, you need to just take a few moments and dance. And dance with your loved ones, dance with those who are friends, and maybe even dance before the Lord. I don't know what that would look like. I I, I used to, when I was a pastor of University Church at Purdue, we used to have the um, black choir from the community come in. And they did a service, so we just opened up the church that. And I would go to uh, the service a lot of times. And a good friend of mine, Derek, he's a talented musician. Many of you know Derek. But he can lead the choir and dance at the same time. I mean, I'm telling you, I could never do that. But it's like, I mean, he's got some moves. I mean, Derek, right, you know? So it's like, I would go like, man, that guy is so good. And it's just, he's not trying, he's just doing it. It's just the joy of the Lord, God's passion in his life. And I tell you, Derek's uh, seen some obstacles in his life, and he's got this sense of resilience too. So here's a suggestion for all of us. Maybe we need to dance like David danced. Dance before the Lord with all your might. Not every moment of the day, but by gosh, now and then to put a little passion in our worship. And when we do, and in our life, we'll find that we have a better sense of resilience as we overcome obstacles. It isn't a magic wand. But here in this moment, if you have a choice to sort of being David, who's happy and joyful, and it isn't about being king anymore, he's kind of leading the people on the street in this dance, or Mikkel up on the second story window, the frozen chosen, you know what I'm talking about, which are you going to be? Which has a better sense of, of life? And David wasn't perfect, but in this moment, he was willing to celebrate and just sort of uh, enjoy all that God had for him. There's an interesting thing in Scripture when Jesus meets the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, do you recall that moment? And the disciples are in town. This woman's got some issues. She's got some bad relationships. And they start with, you know, is it the Samaritans or the Jews and all that? And finally, when Jesus talked about the water of life that he is, the spring of water filling up, she's sort of asking questions about worship. And Jesus tells her what? Those who worship God should worship in spirit and in truth. You know, candles might be nice and readings might be nice, but where are you with worship in spirit and in truth? Connect with yourself. You don't have to put on a facade before God or other people. Just worship God and let your spirit loose a little bit and uh, and God can bless you in a powerful way. I'm going to close with this thought. One of the great theologians of the post-World War II era, and there's only one that I know of, which is the great era in theology, (laughs) no greats really right now like this, is Jürgen Moltmann. So you might not know that name, but he's a great German theologian, still alive today. He's 95 years old, and this is what he says. He says, the universe belongs to the dancer. Not beautiful. The universe, this is the 95 year old theologian from World War II. The universe belongs to the dancer. The person who does not dance does not know what is coming to pass. You know why he says that? I believe he has a glimpse into the future when we are all reunited around God's heavenly home. And guess what? In addition to singing, we're all going to do a little homecoming dance. The universe belongs to the dancer, but not just then, today. If David danced, maybe you can too. Maybe you can move your shoulders a little bit. Uh, Maybe you can discover the joy, the V, of your life, your relationships, and your relationship with God. So take a lesson from the kids today who are often better at dancing than we are because they're tuned into their emotions. They're willing to take a little risk. And do what David did. Go ahead and dance a little. You will discover a new passion in your life, a new joy to be, and you will discover that you have resilience that will enable you to overcome challenges and obstacles that come into every person's life.
We join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you for David, his life, his faith, and this moment that is so unusual in Scripture, but it opens the door to help us discover that maybe in dance there is worship, and maybe in dance there is a key to life and faith. Amen.